welcome to the Heart of Collaboration. I'm your host, Dr. Bernice Belt, and it is always my privilege and my honor to come before you. We have an extra special guest, and I know what you're going to tell me next time I get an email or a text message. Dr. Belt, you always say they're special guests, and that's the truth. They just get better and better. But this is Tanya Nitsky, and she is going to be representing the Paducah School of Art and Design right here in the award-winning Paducah, Kentucky. And so I want to say welcome, Tanya Nitsky. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. I'm really excited. Thank you, you are so welcome and thank you. And I know you're busy and I'm so glad that we were able to coordinate this time together. And I'm already looking forward to the next time you're going to come back for mm -hmm. an update. Yeah. But Tanya, tell us about yourself and I'd like for you to go all the way back when you were a little girl, oh. when you first knew you had a passion for arts. Okay. It's, I feel like it's so long ago, but no, it's weird. Um, yes, I remember um, being obsessed with drawing cartoons. And that's when I first started to learn how to draw was copying cartoons. So I would draw a lot um, Tasmanian Devil and just comic books and learn from that. And then I think from there that's where it all started is just from day one is just copying from that and starting to learn how to draw. Um, originally from upstate New York. Well, I want to know how old you were when you started painting the Tasmanian Devil. Do you remember oh, your age? I don't age? remember. I don't remember the age. Yeah. I think that's one of the favorite uh, character caricatures. Is that the? Is that Maybe. a? Okay, is that a correct word? Okay, we're gonna go with that. Well, yeah, we're you know, for little girls and little boys, that's one of the things they love to draw. Um, now, from that very young age, tell us that next phase of your artistic awareness uh, it may be maybe uh, middle school or high school yeah uh, I believe I was in high school I took a lot of art classes like I was determined every school year when we had to sign up for classes and um, of course you had like your history your math your science but you had some electives um, in high school so I chose art um, and I was always in band too so like music was really important to me I played the clarinet and uh, and I always took an art class. So it's just really developing skills from early on and learning how to draw from life. And I remember I did my first oil painting. I don't think I realized it at the time, but I did my first oil painting in high school and I thought it was really cool. But that's really, it was kind of surface level. Like I thought it was cool, but that was really it. Um, and I just knew art was my passion, but I didn't know where I wanted to head yet with that because art is so big, yes. it's a giant umbrella. And I remember doing, uh, you know, when internet came about and going online and figuring out what I wanted to do and putting art in a search engine and, and just trying to figure it out from there. Um, and then so from there I went to college. Um, I started at a community college for a semester and then I transferred to SUNY Potsdam where I got my BFA, my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. Um, and there I met my mentor, Amy Swartley, and she was the painting instructor. And she was um, basically taught the, the whole painting department and she was amazing and she was an artist herself. And that's where I learned that you could be an artist and teacher. And so um, from her, I learned a lot about oil painting, which I really love to do now. I always say oil is my child. Um, so from her, again, I, I learned a lot. And also as a student there, you had an opportunity to TA, so teaching assist, assisting position. Um, so I signed up for that and I did that and I realized, I'm like, yeah, I think I want to teach. Um, so immediately after getting my BFA, I went on to grad school to get my Master of Fine Arts degree, so mm. my, my MFA, because I knew yes. I wanted to teach, so. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you look like a little it's girl. It's been a long road. <laughs> you look like a little girl, yeah, for such a long journey and all that education, but you still look like you're in high school. Uh, Thank you. Do you get that, that a lot? I do, yeah. <laughs> I do. When I first, when I first started teaching, because um, after grad school, you know, I was looking for teaching positions, and it's a hard field to get into. Um, I was actually invited back to SUNY Potsdam. Amy Swerdely took sabbatical and she goes, hey T, she's like, do you wanna take my position for a year? And I was like, yes I do. <laughs> so I ended up moving back home to New York um, and me and my husband, uh, cause my husband's also a teacher and an artist, he's a printmaker. Um, yeah, we were both teaching there and 
Um, but I remember going into HR office to sign my contract and everything, get paperwork figured out. And I came in the office and the person working there was like, so are you a student? I was like, no, I'm teaching. She's like, you're not a student? I was like, no, I'm teaching here. And she laughed and I was like, yeah, I get that all the time. That's great. But it's good though, because when, when I'm in my older age, I'll hopefully still look Absolutely, look <laughs> absolutely. And, and when you get in your older age, you'll finally get to maybe look like my age. I don't know, we'll, I'll check back <laughs> oh with you goodness. in a few. <laughs> I'll check back with you in a few years. Um, I met you uh, last year briefly, but uh, more so this year. I mm -hmm. uh, got, got to know you and I was so excited because there was some good stuff going on that was going to take place uh, in February. Yeah. And so you tell us about that. Yeah, that was really exciting. So, and it was quick turnaround time from when we had that event because I think it was in December. We're thinking about what to do for Black History Month and we had this idea and that idea, and then um, met with Shaveen, um, who also works here at the college for the diversity office, and we're kind of collaborating, and I thought of, it'd be cool to do portraits and display them um, somewhere for the public of um, African Americans who ha had an impact. So it started with Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. And then we decided, what if we put it down to like local African Americans who have had an impact on the community? So then we stuck with that, and then it, this little idea grew into this huge, awesome monster. And then through that, we were able to collaborate with the diversity office, with NAACP, with the city, with um, Main Street director Katie Axe, and it was just this amazing project. And then the students, um, because this was through um, Student Art and Design Club, because I'm also the advisor for that student organization that's part of WKCTC, um, the students got to work on these paintings of local past African Americans who've had an impact, and they got to learn more about the history of Paducah. So it was an awesome event, mm -hmm. and I thank you for helping me yes. also. Oh, you're so welcome. That. It but was a pleasure. It was a blast. Yes, yes, and I'll plug, um, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and our local chapter Beta Omega Omega for wanting to have a, at least a small hand in what was going on for that day and we appreciate that and we are also at your service. I think I can say that without getting in oh, trouble. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a great turnout. Yeah, and Oh my goodness. We we um, are planning to do it again next February, mm -hmm. So, but at least this time we have more time to plan because yes. that started in December and went really fast so now we're wanting to do this again next year so mm -hmm. stay tuned yes I think it'll be quite a while before you run out of representatives oh, for sure for those for portraits because sure. the 22 that we did was just yes. a small you know those people are amazing some examples the students painted was uh, Maggie Steed and Oscar Cross and um, yeah so we know that's just a small glimpse into the yes. history and mm -hmm. Like you said, we will. Yes, uh, and it's a wonderful um, co collaboration. It's also a wonderful way to connect uh, an environment where the participants are almost always primarily Caucasian Americans and then to expose them to that part of history. And the truth is, I think I may have shared this with you, the truth is all history is everybody's history because it's the human race. It's all, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 to make that connection for them uh, was brilliant. It was responsible, and it it was uh, a a time to be highly respected because many of them are under forty years old, who who participated in the painting of the portraits. Mm -hmm. They're oh, under yeah. forty years old, and yeah. they are detached from 99%, I think I can say easily, 99% of the history with those African Americans. And so many things, you did many things in that project. Yeah, it was great. And mm -hmm. it was an outdoor, um, I mean, the portraits were displayed from inside, but you could see them from the outside. And mm -hmm. people would ask me like, oh, when's the exhibition open? And I, it was great to be able to respond with, oh, it's open 24 seven. You could just walk down there on Broadway and see it and, mm -hmm. and read about mm -hmm. the history. And Well, where so. are those portraits now? 
Um, they're currently stored at Paducah School of Art and Design, and we're just, um, we have some possibilities, so we're just waiting to see. So again, stay tuned. Yes, <laughs> yes, tuned. yes, yes. Um, now, along the way, you've had some heroes from childhood up until mm -hmm. the present. I know you mentioned one lady, but was, who were some of your other heroes, those people who made a really big dent in your journey to get to where you are today? Definitely my, my family, my grandmother especially. She, uh, we were really close, her and my, and my uncle. Um, they unfortunately passed away, um, but she was a huge impact for me growing up. She was a hardworking woman. She grew up on a Mennonite farm in a small town in upstate New York with 11 sisters. Mennonite? And one brother. Can you imagine all those, being that one brother and having all those sisters on a wow. farm with no electricity? It's just crazy. Wow. But she, she would tell me all these stories. And so growing up with stories, storytelling became really important to me. And she would tell me she was in charge of the horses and her father ran a sugar bush and ra made real maple syrup, mm. which my family still sons me, luckily, thank God. Um, yes. Anna. Yeah, she, so she had a hard life growing up and she bestowed some of that upon me of hard working and what it meant to work hard. Um, because my uncle ran a wood business when I was younger and I would help with that, like splitting wood, delivering it to neighbors and um, yeah, she was definitely a hero to me and she influenced a lot of my artwork and now my uncle influences a lot of my artwork that I'm making now, so. Well, tell us a little bit more about the Mennonite background. That's very interesting. And unfortunately, I don't know much about that background because um, where, where I'm from, the Amish and Mennonite live closely together. Um, I just, and, and my grandma would, would tell me a lot about the history of the religion. It just never, for some reason, stuck like that information never really stuck with me for some reason, not quite sure. Grandmother was full Mennonite? Yeah, yeah, and then she, um, yeah, so there's a lot of background. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, it's very interesting. I think people will be very interested in that. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Paducah School of Arts and Design. And I'm adding an S to art, and I shouldn't. It's Paducah School of Art and Design. Uh, tell us a little bit, and I have the mission I have the goals and I have the mission here with me. Uh, and if, if you want me to, I can read portions of that. But uh, go ahead and, and share uh, some, of, some of the beginning, maybe, early beginning, if you can. And then uh, talk a little bit about goals and how you, what you're doing in order to fulfill the mission. Well, I know um, we just celebrated our 10-year anniversary. Because um, before the, the new location, um, that we have now um, at 905 Harrison Street. Um, so we have, we have two separate buildings. We have the 2D building that houses um, like drawing, painting, um, and the visual communications program, which is um, run by Beverly Quimby. She's program coordinator. Um, and then we also offer the AFA degree, which is um, the program coordinator of that is Paul Aho. And then next door, we have the, like a block away, we have the 3D building, which has sculpture, ceramics, um, small metals. Um, and then we also have printmaking over to the 2D building as well. But those buildings, I believe, have been there for, um, I think, four years now. And then prior to that, uh, WKCTC's Paducah School of Art and Design was located on Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we just celebrated our 10 year, and uh, and prior to this year, I was adjuncting there for uh, two years. So I just started as full time faculty, which I was really excited for. Oh, so yeah. you're now full time faculty. Yeah. Congratulations! Which has been amazing. Tell somebody they need to update the the website. <laughs> um, congratulations! Thank That's you. awesome, and yeah. certainly you earned it. Um, I love being in your presence. I love being in the presence of artists. And I don't think I said this early on uh, in my opening, but you are a guest to continue our local artist series. And as I was sharing with Tom Butler, Dan Shepard, Brandon Story, uh, on staff here, Tom is the executive director of the TV department. I shared with them that their artistry is so 
vast that I dare say, and, and when I had Nelvin here on the show, mm -hmm. we were, I think, in agreement that everything is art. If you're, if it's, if you're passionate about it, uh, it's art. Yeah. And uh, the, what the guys do here, videotaping the heart of collaboration, that's art. But they oh, don't yeah. call themselves artists, but really they are. Yeah. And, and even after we sign off, they still have work to do, mm -hmm. which is another form of artistry, and that's oh, editing. Yeah. And that's what I tell my students. Um, sometimes they teach the intro to art class here on campus, um, and that's for like non-art majors. And I tell them being creative is a part of your everyday life. Because I think sometimes people connect creativity with arts and things that's just painting or just drawing, but it's so much more. Um, and those are just stepping stones to be freely creative in your life. And I say, even if you're in a business meeting and you have to come up with ideas, that's being creative. Yes. If you're a scientist mm -hmm. in inventing new things, like that's being creative too. And yeah, I think it just uh, reaches to and, so many and things. Yes, and as a result, uh, we may be doing local artist series until Jesus comes. Yeah. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We might be here a while, huh, Dan? We might be here a while. Uh, and, and certainly, um, uh, people have encouraged this series. They are excited. And when uh, Tom gives us the link where we can have it on Facebook, people get so excited. And when I, if they call me, or if they text me, or if they email me, I tell them just exactly what we were saying now, what yeah. Melvin and I said, and what uh, First Lady uh, McReynolds said when she was here. Uh, that people will be enlightened, they will be educated, they will get excited, they will find more value in their in their existence because now they'll look at everything differently and, and of course the heart of collaboration is not going to be the only outlet mm -hmm. where that happens but we want to add to it and and we just want to put faces with the artistry and uh, and maybe we'll do a remote one of these days. I yeah, don't know. I'm saying that out loud. I haven't asked yet. I hope I don't get in trouble with Tom Butler. But maybe do a remote one day and uh, maybe even shoot uh, more than one episode to make their time worthwhile. Um, but uh, people need to know that if they have a passion for it, it doesn't harm anyone, mm -hmm. it doesn't harm the atmosphere, the environment. Uh, it, 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 it probably is artistry. We were talking about, I know Elvin grew up a country kid, I'm a country kid, and I, I told him about farm equipment in the pasture, under the shade tree, by the pond, and how when I was a little girl, I, I thought it was beautiful, but I didn't know that you could take those things and create, you know, uh, an advanced form of artistry. Mm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was too young, didn't have yeah. the wisdom to know that. But as I got older, I began to think back on my childhood days, and I used to think, oh my God, I could have painted the barn. I could have painted the, the chicken the chicken house. Yeah. You know, I'm, and I'm thinking, with chickens on the, on the yard. I, I, and I'm thinking about all that. And then, but people like you and students like your students and students like everywhere, they're doing those things. It wasn't their part of their uh, life journey, but they've seen those things and they develop a passion for it and they make those things right. come alive. And so country kids like me, we're like, oh, I want to buy that and put it on my wall because that reminds me of when I was a little oh, girl. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, uh, on your on your sign here, your signage behind you, uh, there are there are different uh, genres of art that are listed there. Uh, Talk about maybe two or three of them and uh, classes that are available for people who really, really, really want to come in and fine tune what's on the inside of them. Yeah, we offer an array of classes in different disciplines. Um, we have drawings, learning to um, work from observation. Um, Rainy Simmons is the drawing professor and he brings in models and so really learn how to draw from life and those skills which you know, drawing's kind of the gateway to a lot of different things, and then we offer painting. Um, 
I'm going to back up. There's drawing uh, one, two, mm -hmm. and there's life drawing. Um, there's painting one and two in advance. We also offer digital photography, and there's um, printmaking and visual communications department. There's an array of uh, Photoshop and web editing multimedia, so they offer a lot of different tracks. Um, there's small metals, sculpture, ceramics. So there's like an, a wide range of different skills you can learn and, and the school's really awesome like that. Like I come from a small town and the community college that we had, the art department was just one room, one instructor. So I think it's really cool how we have this community college and we're connected and students get to experience all these different avenues in art and get to learn them. Yes. So. Uh, there was an event earlier this year and uh, I dropped by uh, and I went into the classroom where there were parents and their children and they were sculpting, they were using clay uh, and they were sculpting things and I went in there and I'm thinking, I've got to go to a meeting after I leave here, but oh God, I really want to stick my hands yeah. in that clay. Yeah. You know, I felt like a kid again. You know, kids love to mess around with yeah, mud. Yeah, like hands on. Yes, mm -hmm. and I saw yeah. those children so focused and so intense tense and then there was this one little girl and she was just I thought oh my god if if I look that hyper sometimes I am really hyper <laughs> she I just I got a kick out of just watching her she and her mother were doing something together and then I went over to stand by one of the instructors and I asked asked him a couple of questions and I watched and he was you know dealing with the clay and keeping it I guess pliable I suppose, and uh, but it was just, I don't know, I felt like a kid in yeah, that room. Yeah, and they do some really cool things over there. Rob Lorenz is our ceramics instructor, and he does um, amazing things, even with his own work. And um, I've tried ceramics once in my life, but it didn't work out. But the things that he can do with a wheel, I'm just amazed at what ceramic artists can do. <laughs> yes. Um, when when you collaborate, which organizations, uh, what are the organizations with whom you, you collaborate uh, in, in, the, in the art arena? Um, Maybe, uh, oh, um, Yeiser. Yeah, I guess, I guess it depends what I'm, what I'm doing. Because I feel like there's always multiple things happening mm -hmm. between like my own artwork and then being the advisor for the Student Art and Design Club mm -hmm. and then teaching. Um, wear, I wear lots of hats, so, so I feel like the collaboration um, is many things. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely the Eiser Art Center. Mm -hmm. um, worked with them many times. Uh, J.W. Cleary for the NAACP, worked mm -hmm. with him. Um, and just the, the Defining Paducah event. Um, yes. And again, that was cool because we were able to collaborate with so many people and connect people who didn't know mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was beautiful too. And um, yeah, Paducah's really a really cool town because it's small, but not small. Yes, There's yes. always events happening yeah. every weekend. and We um, are an art community. Yeah. And we are known I think it would be fair to say not only nationally but internationally mm -hmm. in some yes. in some areas, and uh, an award-winning community, mm -hmm. award-winning in our arts. Or what Main Street? Do we have, are we award winner in the main Main Street? If we're not, we ought to be. Right, right. Uh, and uh, we have a lot to be proud of. Now, here's the thing that we were talking about. I don't know if you recall this part of the conversation about how we have to get disinterested people interested because they don't understand how filled with talent they are as well. Afraid of failure, afraid of not being accepted, afraid of not looking as talented as the next person, or whose talent may not be as valuable to one as it is to another. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, uh, the level of value for art, it doesn't have to be the same for everything right. and everybody. And so that is a tremendous amount of diversity within itself. And not to worry about competition and comparison. Right. Right. That your art is what God gave you, and that is what you value, that is what you want to promote, that's what you want to share. And, 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 then, it, and then it's not just about the artist, it's about the universe. Right, right, and I think that's something we're always trying to do with students is to get them involved 
in community events and to get them involved beyond the classroom. Um, and I think we've been doing a good job of that so far, yes. just through the, the student art and design mm -hmm. um, organization. Uh, for example, the Yeiser had their Fall, uh, fall Fibers Festival last year. And um, we really encourage our students to sign up and volunteer. We're, and we're always encouraging them to volunteer for events because we want to promote professionalism mm -hmm. and how to build yourself up and work with people. Yeah. So I think um, in large, be, beyond the Student Art and Design Club, the student organi organizations we have on campus, um, it's a good way to get the students involved and say, hey, look, volunteer for these things. You're going to meet people and you're going to do things that maybe you didn't do before to build up their skills. Yes. You know. and, and we want to encourage uh, everyone, and then share this with everyone too, uh, please. Uh, we, we, we are pro part of a, um, a human race, and it's very important for us to uh, help people. And so when we know, we grow. And the more we know, the more we grow, the more of a responsibility and obligation that we have to help others to do the same, not just people who live under the same roof as us, but, but people outside of our homes, in and outside of our churches, in and outside of our nonprofits that we vol where we volunteer, whatever the case may be, make sure that you are part of the knowing and growing community. And Tanya Nyski, I want to thank you so very much. I can't wait to have you come back again. I thank you so much, and I just want to lastly say, um, definitely check out our websites, um, West, or um, WKCTC's website and Paducah School of Art and Design, and we have lots of things coming up, and stay tuned, follow, follow us on social media, um, follow the Student Art and Design Club on social media, we're on Instagram and Facebook, and yeah, just see what's coming up. They've got you. They've got you covered every which way. And so we want to thank you for being a part of the Heart of the Collaboration TV show. And uh, be sure to tune in whenever you get a chance. You're going to see this on Facebook. Uh, these guys are really great about getting that all done and making that available. And 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 I'm still listening to your ideas and suggestions. And re and remind you, there were other people who suggested having a local artist series. It just didn't come from me. And so I always like to give credit where it's due. Thank you again. Thank Tell you. everybody at the school me. hello. Okay, I will do. And thank you from the heart of collaboration. Thank mm -hmm. you.